Hi, friends and families. Grandma Alicia here. How's everybody doing? Got some new flavored tea here. This is cinnamon vanilla. Um, wanted to say hi to Ophelia and Royce and Kai. I sure miss you guys. All right, tonight we're gonna read A Whale of a Tale. All about porpoises, dolphins, and whales. And it has, uh, it's by Bonnie Worth, but it has uh, Dr. Seuss cat in the hat art. All right, here we go. A Whale of a Tale by Bonnie Worth, illustrated by Joe Matthew. What's the story today? Funny thing you should ask. We're going to take on a whale of a task to learn about whales and their smaller relations, porpoises and dolphins. The group called Cetaceans. Cetaceans. Spelled kind of strange. So please hang on tight as we lower down towards the boat that we soon will be sailing aboard. One very large boat, the best in the nation, Captain Magellot's Citation Station. Here we go. Like monkeys and donkeys and dogs and cats, camels, whales, porpoises, and dolphins are all kinds of mammals. Citations might look like fish in the sea, but citations are closer to you and to me. They're warm-blooded like us, but with fins and no legs. They give birth to live babies and do not lay eggs. So that's the difference between a citation and a, like a fish, because fish lay eggs. But citations blow holes like noses breathe airs, breathe air. So on a whale, you'll have a blowhole. Then they have a fin. And this shows you on like a fish, how fish lay eggs. And fish have gills, they don't have blowholes. And when I go paddleboarding out in the ocean, a lot of times I'll know a dolphin or a um, manatee is near because I'll hear the of air blow out of their blowhole. So that's often how you can tell they're nearby. They'll surprise you sometimes and all of a sudden you'll hear this <laughs> and you look and you're like, where is it? And then you'll see a manatee or a dolphin or even a whale. All right, here's our next page. Land mammals have bodies all covered with hairs. Citations have just a few spare hairs on theirs. So our hair keeps us warm, but their fat does the trick. Sometimes like a mattress, it's two whole feet thick. Whew, like blubber on a whale. So that's what he's showing there. Another big difference between whales and fish, thing one and thing two can explain if you wish. Fish flap their tails side to side when they go a fish tail. So a fish tail goes like this. But whales flip theirs upward and downward like so. So a whale does this with its tail. And a fish goes side to side. That's pretty interesting. That's like, so when, if you ever see a dolphin, uh, the difference between a dolphin and a whale is the same. A I mean, a dolphin and a shark, you'll see that where a shark's tail swims this way because it's a fish and it lays eggs. But a dolphin who has live babies, its tail goes, si its tail goes up and down like this. So some type citations catch food with the teeth in their head. 
others use something called baleen instead. Baleen is what a lot of whales have, and so it's kind of like a big filter. Fish go in there and it filters it. So here's teeth. So that's an orca, has teeth like this. And this is baleen, which is like a big filter. And then, so the krill, which are little baby fish, go in the whale's mouth and then it's um, able to eat them. So it says baleen grows in rows and forms sort of a grill for straining tiny sea creature sea creatures called krill. Both toothed or baleen, cetaceans don't chew, they swallow whole food. That's all they do. So toothed whales, spotted dolphins, killer whale or orca, golf porpoise or a sperm whale. Some whales even swallow some things by mistake, a bucket or a boot or a big rubber snake. Most citations we know like to swim in a troop. A pod is a name that we give to this group. If danger is near, they will sound an alert to keep their young safe and help keep those who are hurt. And this says false killer whales, so they swim in a group or a pod. Because it is a smallish, the porpoise is shy. It swims near the shore and does not leap up high. Only doll porpoises swim out in the sea 30 miles an hour. The porpoise is speedy. Doll porpoises I've seen many times when I'm out sailing and I've been sailing in Hawaii and they look like little orcas. They're black and white and gray and white like that. Right, so we can all play a game. So let's make a start. Porpoise or dolphin, who can tell them apart? So we've got A, B, C, D, or E. So porpoise's teeth are flat, dolphins are cones. Porpoise's noses are shorter with delicate bones. Porpoise or dolphin, it's easy to spot spot. Dolphins' noses are long, but porpoises are not. So, looks like this one has a long nose. This one has a long nose. This one has a long nose. This one has no nose and no nose. So, these are porpoises, B and C, and A, D, E are dolphins. So, that's what it says. There's a big orca. Of dolphins, there are about 35 types. Some dolphins have patches, others have stripes. Fraser's dolphin, Rizzo's dolphin, this one's called a shorked beak common dolphin. And then we have the smallest is five feet from its nose to its tail. The largest is orca or the killer whale. So this is an orca and this is Hector's dolphin. It's here. look like the spinning dolphins. Let's see what it says. Bottlenose leap forward as neat as you please. The dusky leaps backward and does it with ease. The one we call spinner, McElliot nose, spins around in the air like a top. This guy goes and sometimes the spinner will come to a stop and peer out of the water. It's called a sigh hop. So there it is spinning. There's when it does a sigh hop, comes out of the water and looks. 
This guy jumps backwards, and this one goes forwards. what we have here. This humpback is one very odd looking mammal. Its back has a hump like a land living camel. So this is an Indo-Pacific humpback dolphin. So see back here it's got a hump and then this dolphin's a boto. And what do you think if I told you a boto has skin that is pink? Pink dolphin. I've heard those are in the Amazon river down in South America. The dolphin has a way of looking around by forming a picture that's made out of sound. It sends out a sound at a high steady rate. The sound bounces back making its jawbone vibrate. Outgoing signal. Your wadi dolphin. So it uses echolocation. Echolocation is the word we call that underwater way that dolphins see all. So it's kind of like a bat where they can put out this echolocation and they know where everything is at. Most dolphins could win mommy of the year. They care for their young and keep them quite near. When dolphins are born, a nurse dolphin is there to bring baby up to breathe in its first air. So they always have a nurse mama there to help. And when mom goes to hunt, why this thoughtful critter leaves baby behind with a babysitter. When I go paddle boarding, I see lots of mama and baby dolphins. Matter of fact, I saw some yesterday when we were out in the water. Let's see what this says. I bet you are thinking, hey, what about whales? The biggest comes last. Oh, that trick never fails. Whales as a rule like to stay on the move as all of our studies can easily prove. So these are say whales. In tropical seas in the winter they breed. In the summer they swim toward the poles to feed. So they go to the North Pole and the South Pole. So it says breeding areas are in the middle where it's nice and warm. And then some go north and some go south. Some scientists tag whales with sensors or plates to study their habits, their lives, and their traits. It's a fin whale. When we lived in Hawaii, we'd always see the humpback whales. And in California, we saw gray whales. The sperm whale can dive down one mile or more. Its rich blood and muscles are up to the chore. A cave in its head, that's the size of a jeep, weighs down the whale's body and helps it sink deep. So this is a sperm whale. See how big the top of its head is? A cave in its head. Oh, can you imagine? The size of a Jeep. That's huge. Mm, anybody know what that one is? Is that a narwhal? Let's see. Some whales we have found have teeth much like beaks. They live far from the land, but we've seen a few, but we've had a few peaks. So there's the Blaine, Blaineville's beaked whale, Coover's beaked whale, Baird's beaked whale. And this is the narwhal's long tooth is a tusk, as you can see. It might work as a sword or maybe an ice pick. Ice pick, hmm. break up the ice. One day you might hear a big loud splash. A whale has leapt up and come down with a crash. We call this act breaching and no person, not one, knows why the whales do that. Perhaps just for fun. The best breeders, breachers of all are these whales. They say humpback and sperm, right whale and gray. So this is 
a gray whale right here. And then this is a humpback. They have these long fins. And then the sperm whales, the one that has the big cavity in the front. There's a right whale, it's saying. That's a humpback whale there. And those humpbacks sing. Let's see if it talks about that yet. The ocean is loud with the sounds of whale talking, whales talking. They're clicking and groaning and moaning and squawking. They kind of do this <coughs> sound. It's a click, click. Oh, this kind of whale song. You can probably Google it and listen to it. It says, why is it whales talk? To communicate who, what, why, and where, and if they'll be late. So they talk to each other with these big singing sound. It's really neat to listen to. The humpback sweet song won McElliot's heart. It even showed up on a music pop chart. Dick and Sally all set. Oh, this will be a blast. Here comes the blue whale. The biggest comes last. So the blue whale is the biggest whale of all. So this is the humpback. And then this is the blue whale in the back. And you can just see the tail of it. So that's how big it is. The blue whale is big. And for what it's worth, it's the biggest thing living in the sea on the earth. Probably the biggest thing on earth. Yet the blue whale is big, yes indeed, and what's more, bigger still than the big, 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 biggest dinosaur. So it's bigger than a stegosaurus. Look at that. The story of the por porpoise, the dolphin, and the whale. You have to admit. Is a whale of a tail. That's the end. A Whale of a Tale by Bonnie Worth with Dr. Seuss Art. Sweet dreams. Thanks for watching Grandma Alicia's Storytime. Remember to subscribe, and if you feel like it, you can comment your favorite book below or tell us what you thought about the book we just read. Thank you.